So tomorrow is February 19th, and it will be 75 years since D-Day on Iwo Jima, a grueling 36-day World War II battle in the Pacific involving 70,000 U.S. Marines taking on 21,000 Japanese soldiers, battling for control of that tiny island 700 miles south of Japan. Control was necessary for any U.S. invasion of the mainland. And as I said, nearly 7,000 U.S. Marines died in that battle. My uncle Harry Gray was one of them. His story and the story of seven other young men who served with him is the inspiration behind my new book, Unknown Valor, now the subject of Fox News' special that will air this Sunday night at 10 p.m. I hope you'll watch. In the 34th replacement draft, yeah, I... um, is, this, is this someone that you recognize? Oh, yeah. It was my buddy, Gray. I think his name was Gray. He was my uncle. He was my buddy, a <laughs> foxhole buddy. He'd always call me Pop. It's so great to meet Charlie Gubish. Turned 101 the other day. Joining me now is Tim Gray, World War II Foundation fo founder and filmmaker, going back to Iwo Jima with a very special group of veterans who served there. Tim, great to see you. You too. And you are about to take a trip that I took last year. Yeah, exactly. Um, why is it so important that we remember this battle and these men? Oh boy, where do we begin? Do we have four hours? <laughs> uh, the brutality of that fight was unprecedented. Yes. And um, when, you, when you talk about what happened on that island, and everyone always says that the Japanese were not, you know, on Iwo Jima, they were in Iwo Jima. So all the pre invasion bombardment and everything else didn't do anything. So this became an individual marine fight against the Japanese and it was a close quarter battle and it was the bayonet and it was the pistol and then it was the flamethrower and Marines had to go cave to cave and fortification to fortification to get these Japanese out and there were 21,000 Japanese on the island and by the end of the fight there were less than a thousand and the brutality of the fight I think really is what stands out to me. The other thing that stands out to me is the, the people who did it, the yeah. young men who were part of this fight most of whom were, some of them were as young as 16, some of them were 18, like Harry Gray, who had just graduated from high school. Uh, one of the men I met, George Coburn, talked about, you know, he said, I, I couldn't believe it, you know. Eight months before that, I was at my, junior, at my mm -hmm. senior prom, and then I was in the middle of the Pacific on this horrific island. It's unbelievable, the bravery of these young men. Yeah, and just what happened to the the 4th and the 5th Marine Division and the 3rd Marine Division and, and, and how um, they never saw the Japanese. And, and the Japanese would, would come out, and again, that's where the flamethrowers came in. And uh, it was just when you look at all the fighting, and as the war drew to a close, the fighting became more horrific. Places like Peleliu and Guam and Tinian and Saipan and Iwo Jima and Okinawa. And the interesting thing, Martha, is we've interviewed hundreds of World War II veterans, especially those who served in the Pacific, and not one of them has ever told us we should not have dropped the atomic bombs on Japan. Those who experienced the last two years of the war, even the earlier time at Guadalcanal and, and Tarawa and other places, knew what would happen if the United States and the Allies had to go into Japan. They knew that there would be a million casualties, and they knew that Japan as a country would cease to exist. So I always found that interesting of those who served in the Pacific and went through all that hor horrific time and the brutality always said, you know, President Truman did the right thing. I heard the same thing. Uh, they said Harry Truman was my best friend. Uh, they didn't, you know, it, they had seen, as you say, up close what it was like, and it was getting worse and worse. And you are headed there. Yeah. Um, with some of, with some veterans, right? Yeah, we're going back with some veterans for a documentary that uh, Gary Sinise is going to narrate that will come out, awesome. and uh, and following some families who had dads who fought there as well. We look forward to seeing it. Thank as you. always, Tim Gray, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have a thank wonderful you. trip. Thank you, Martha. The story continues next.